and um, uh, hello from me. I know most of you. And um, uh, Margie, thanks for setting all this up so it all makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, uh, I've known Ross Moore for a couple of years. He lives uh, and works in the South Bay. He has a studio on PCH at Knob Hill. And um, I've known him uh, because he had an article about him in the local Easy Reader, which said open house, it was December. And I climbed up these steps and lo and behold, there was this fabulous studio with paintings all over the place and massive tubes of oil paint. I thought, well, there's going to be something right going on. <laughs> so uh, we got to know each other. And uh, Ross um, gave a talk, not necessarily a demonstration, because we were looking for something different at another group I'm part of, the Artist Open Group. Up um, in, We meet up at the Palace Verdes Art Centre. Anyway, Ross gave a very interesting talk without really um, showing any, any, any particular methods in his madness, but it was enough to keep us all captivated uh, for the evening. And I thought, well, this has to be uh, good fodder for the pastel artists, rather than watching somebody, you know, slave away with uh, sticks of pastel and stumble about and copy a photograph. Um, he, I thought his philosophy sounded good and his approach and where he'd come from and why he's here and um, what he's been creating. And he was in the California 101 show earlier this year at the old Redondo Library. I had, a of, uh, was there a question? Nope, okay. There's, there's some faint noises coming through. I, I can't quite make it out. Anyway, he sold a couple of beautiful pictures. And uh, I thought, well, there's there's a very positive side to what's going on. So uh, we were out painting one time with my Friday group, and he um, so he painted something on the spot, and noted that it took something like thirty one minutes. I thought, well, this guy's doing something different. <laughs> so let's have him aboard. And so uh, Ross, I'm going to ask you to um, add anything to that and we'll get the ball rolling. Are, are there any questions before we get going with Ross? Good. I'm glad I've made the right impression. <laughs> Does he know how to share a screen? Uh, I don't know. Uh, ask him to share his screen. Yeah. Uh, Ro Ross Go ahead. Tell me how to do it. <laughs> on, the, on the bottom in the center, there's a green button that says share screen. Share content? Yeah. Yeah. Screen? Yeah. And um, start broadcast, uh, screen broadcast? Yeah, you're, yeah, just. Two, one. Well, are you gonna. There we go. <laughs> Am I there? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. And I yeah. think I have to uh, do its thing. Oh, I, it is moving around like a little clock. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, back out of that. Okay, let me see Turn if I can off. do it. I'm sorry. Um, stop the share. Share the device audio on. Yeah, okay, you're good now. Just keep don't do anything else. Um, okay. yeah. yeah. Just are, are you going to? sit there and talk to us are you going to demo what are you going to do no uh, i'm just going to speak to you about uh, basically what what um where i come from and um, some uh, concepts about art and um sure. and um just some interesting things so i'll just be talking then you're all set to go just go ahead and, and do your thing and everybody else yeah kind of be quiet and and when he'll he'll have a time later for questions i think Okay. Yeah, I don't know what kind of time you, how long you want me to to talk, but I probably could talk for a couple hours. But uh, no. I, I know we're limited on time, so I'll well, just rattle on. And, talk, so, so you know, you just cut me off, you know. Um, I'll just <laughs> <laughs> I'll just rattle on. But um, thanks, Bernard. I wanted to say that was a wonderful uh, way that you put um, 
how we know each other and 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 what I what I do and um, where I kind of came from, I can maybe fill a few of those details in and 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 ex uh, you know expand on that a little bit. Um, I uh, I grew up in San Francisco and, in a large family, and um, my my mom had to keep all of us busy, and she knew exactly what all of us each individually what each person's talent was, whether it was music or science or dance or uh, teaching or reading or, you know, whatever. Mine was art and she knew it. She sent me to uh, De Young Museum when I was 12 years old to start to study basically uh, life drawing um, of things like Egyptian art and statues and in the museum. It was quite a, it was quite a really cool experience. Um, I went through and I, I did that and um, and I learned how to draw and uh, it was amazing. I I moved to uh, we moved to uh, the Midwest and I I again my mother put me into another class with um, with an artist by the name of uh, uh, Leona Cooper. <clears throat> it turned out to be a really good artist. I didn't realize it at the time, and uh, I was with her for about two years and. Uh, I didn't know how good she was, but apparently she was quite quite the artist in the 60s and 70s uh, for watercolor. And uh, you might all know it's a very difficult medium, uh, but as 14 year old, I didn't know any better. So I just jumped in. I came back to Los Angeles, or I moved to Los Angeles after that. And uh, in high school, I met a teacher there that took me under his wing. Jack McLean was his name. and. Um, he, he saw my talent too, I guess, or my abilities. And he, did, he said, you don't have to do what the rest of these classes are doing, what the rest of these students are doing. And he put me into a storeroom that, that housed all of the materials for the art department for the high school. I was all by myself. And man, it was heaven. I mean, charcoal, you know, uh, I mean, gouache, watercolors, acrylics weren't real big back then, but... Um, uh, oils, um, weird papers, like, you know, papers for ink, uh, only, uh, you know, a heavy duty watercolor paper, uh, just go, go over to the shelf, pull it out and do whatever you want to. And actually I, I turned it into a small business. I, I started to take on graphic art, um, uh, uh, commissions, uh, for people around the community. And some of my student friends, they wanted to have things, you know, graphic, arts done for like a, their dad's business or something they were doing that they needed. Uh, the school hooked into me and they started having me do graphics for like the yearbook and uh, uh, the opus, uh, the band book, the um, high tide um, newspaper for the school. Um, and, it, you know, they got me cheap and uh, everybody was really happy. I thought I was going to pursue a graphic arts career, but um, I, I ran out of steam on it and I, it didn't really turn me on. I, I went into kind of a business mode at that point, but I always painted. I always had a studio underneath the stairs or in the basement or in my bedroom to one side of the room or in the garage, mostly in garages. And I, I kept on teaching myself or uh, getting lessons from other people. I ran into Ken Oster uh, in the early, in the late 90s, 99, probably. Uh, he's an oil painter. Some people may know him. Uh, uh, he used to live in uh, Laguna. He's passed away now, but uh, we became good friends. He taught me a lot about oil painting, but on top of that, he taught me a lot about business and the art, the business of art, I should say, and how to sell your art and how to go to galleries and how to um, take measure your time and quantify what you're doing and set goals. And so I, I was one of his students for I don't know, six or seven years. And um, I learned a lot from him. And to this very day, I'm looking at my wall here. I have all kinds of things about how I'm pricing my, my art and, and what's my, what are my one, two, three, what are my seven different paintings I'm trying to complete right now and what the date is. I have a I have a, um, a stamper that I use, you know, this is a, a date stamper. So I put the date on everything. So because you look back and you say, uh, you have a little drawing or a little painting or a little uh, charcoal that you did. 
And you said, gosh, this is a nice little piece. I don't know where, where, where it came from. I don't know what, but I look at it. There's the date on it. I knew, I know when I did it. So um, I'm lucky enough to be in a little galleries and they sell a lot of my art and I'm, they validate me and I'm very happy about that, but I'm kind of moving past that again. So um, I think as artists, no matter what your medium is, you have to expand, you have to grow, you have to change and evolve um, and, and the more that you know, um, uh, it, it changes your art. So I'm continuously looking to change and to, to grow and expand. Uh, I try to find something in art. I try to find myself in my art, I should say. I look to see what it, what it is that I uh, create. And uh, is, there a, is there a message there or, or is there something in there that I really, really like that 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 means something to me. And I know this sounds a little. It may sound a little uh, strange or whatever, but it's. It, uh, I don't know. You might. You, some of you may experience this. And you look at a piece of art that you did. Your a, a painting, a theme, a genre that you did, and you just love something about it. Just some little piece that you really, really like, and you wish you could do. Wish everything that you did looked like that, or, or it could be in all of the painting but it's just one little square somewhere or even a corner or whatever. And I really believe that part is like, is like genuinely you as an artist. And so I seek that, I try to find that and go after that and expand that. Uh, and so, and so that's, what, that's, that's what I'm doing. And, and, that's, um, and that's kind of the mission I'm on. And I, I've, acquired, I've acquired some knowledge just from doing uh, being active in, in the arts for so many years. Uh, and um, occasionally people come to my studio and just want to ask me questions or they seek me out. Um, I think that's kind of how Bernard, Bernard and I met. Um, I have open studio tours where I just kind of open the doors. and um, But constantly I'm pushing to find something that is uniquely me and autobiographical in its essence. Um, whether that's an abstracted form or a realistic form for another artist or most of my paintings and my drawings, my art is kind of um, bold and sort of abstracted. Uh, it's gotten to that point. Um, my influences when I, when I was growing up or when I, when I became more into my adult years were obviously like a lot of people there were Matisse and Picasso and and you know even for me you know Joan Mitchell was was those the the expressionists the post impressionists were were awesome uh, artists and they and they were just recently here just you know in the 50s and 60s and and 40s if you will um, and so Kandinsky in the turn of the century was an interesting character along with Hans Hoffman and his push and pull. The colorist, you know, Joseph Alberts, uh, Joseph Alberts, I should say. Um, the, these are all people that I've studied and I've looked at and I've taken little pieces of them and put them into my soul and see if I can shine that back out onto a canvas, onto a paper onto a onto a surface and and create create uh, some art from it it's um uh, demon corn was was one one of the artists that really s stuck with me and um it, and that's not unusual he's very popular obviously a southern mostly a southern california artist but um he he the art that i was creating for maybe since since the 2000, the, the turn of the century, 2000, for the last 20 plus years, the art that I've been creating, I looked at it, I looked back at it, and a lot of it was abstracted and in a form that was very, um, so some way similar to Diebenkorn's, um, I don't want to say style, but um, interesting enough, but curiously looked like his work, or it had the intention, the intent of his work and so i started buying books and reading him reading up on his his work and going to see where i could find his work his you know in the in the, in the lacma there's a few they have some of his pieces 
Uh, so I, I really got into it and I really looked at it and, and, I, and I appreciated him very much. Um, I do not copy him, but I continue to try to move down that path. Um, so um, to, that, to that end, I, I, um, I, I use photographic reference um, because it's so prevalent nowadays. Uh, and um, I mean, clean air is, 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 the, is the best way to look at anything, to see nature, to see, to see a horizon, to see a, 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 a still life. But um, you can't always do it. And I, I have a um, kind of a hypercharged um, art um, um, schedule. I, I probably produce somewhere around 15 or 20 paintings a month. Uh, and I do sketches in the in the realm of maybe 30 or 40 sketches, uh, studies, um, color studies, uh, in a month uh, monthly basis. So um, I have uh, flat files. I have I have I have a storage problem, <laughs> but my studio is about 1,200 square feet, and it's uh, chock full of um, of art that's going in and out and being painted over or being changed. But it's um, there's always something constantly going on. So I I I needed to find a utility, a way that I could for, could find an image that would start the inspiration inside of me to 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 be able to uh, to to start an idea and and to and to and to grab it and to put it into my and to have myself be put into it, my thought put into it, uh, and. Um, and so there's millions of photographs, uh, obviously, uh, photographically. We're, we're all in competition with photographs, us artists, okay? So uh, <laughs> people, look at, uh, people look at their phones all day or they look at, they look at uh, their computers and they find these, you know, it's all beautiful photographs. Uh, images are everywhere. Uh, cinematography is everywhere. You know, Netflix, you just turn it on. I mean, it's any time of the day. It's, it's, it's incredible. Um, and fine art, if you will, is it's a battle to keep um, to keep uh, a, 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 a mo most people focused on it. So um, I, I I find the the way to do that, or um, maybe a solution for that, is to really be honest with yourself and be autobiographical in your work. Um, that's that's code for don't copy another artist, but it, it is true. It's <laughs> It's hard to find yourself, but that's my, that's my mission, as it were. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to find, find uh, something that really means something to me. And I, and I, at a at this point, I have a little bit of that. I feel like I have that, but I also, I also have a lot of uh, pent up knowledge that I would love to share with people. And when uh, Bernard was discussing these things about classes and teaching, I'm not, I'm not, I don't think I'm a teacher, but, um, but I, I think it's a, I think it's a good thing to do for your own self is to share if you know something um, and let some other people have it and maybe that'll help them uh, or maybe they'll get a different look at or change course on something that'll move them in to something else. All the people i the 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 T young um, people that I met there and and these people in high school and and Leona Cooper and, and Ken Oster and, and uh, others there I'm so grateful to have them and so um, not to be corny it's nice to give back something a little bit and if I can do that um, that's fine I I I would love to, I would love to do it and um, and to that end I think that's where I would go with um, the class that we're having. We call it a class. It's more like a lecture class. Um, we're going to have on uh, it's uh, what is it? What is it, Bernard? Saturday, the eleventh of March. Right, right. And so I would encourage uh, if anyone wants to be there, or if uh, if you're local and you can be there, um, I would be glad to expound a, a lot more on these um, these ideas that I have and how um, I use photographs. For example, I use photographs. Uh, this is a this is a photograph of the cafeteria at Pepperdine University in Malibu. I went up to go see a Diebenkorn show in their little museum there, 
and there was a hundred pieces of Devon corn in this museum. Ooh. And there was maybe one or two people in, in this museum. And I stayed in there for probably two and a half hours. And I was, uh, it, I was amazed. It was beautiful. Um, and I thought, God, why aren't there more people here? But um, I went into the cafeteria to get a cup of coffee and I saw this, this scene and I took my, my, I have always carry a camera with me and I shot this camera, I shot this scene. People with the water in the background. But this is how I look at a painting. And this is what I would be discussing with, with, with uh, a class is how I break it into pieces. If you notice, I, I break it into a, um, what they call a grid. But my grid is, is geographic. Uh, it's, 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 it's centered in the center. It's a point in the center. Or wherever, I, or wherever I want that point to be. And then it radiates out into triangles. So um, I also change the horizon. I change the top. I change the color. Um, it ends up looking like something like this. It's a 24 by, it's a 24 by 24 canvas. But uh, that's the painting that I have from this. Just finished it, by the way, maybe five days ago. Nice, so, nice. Yeah, and it's um, it's a fun kind of sketchy. I'm very loose of my with my paintings, but it's not just the oil that I'm talking about. It's it's just it's art. It's all about art. So it's how you grab it. And so I thought I would give you just a quick example of how I look at one photograph. If you can come to the class, bring a photograph with you. Um, I would love to see what I can help you with or help the class with and understand what I would be doing um, with, with a particular image and how I would convert that. It has to mean something to you. You have to look at something and go you know, this, it just, it grabs me some way. This grabbed me because <laughs> it was square and it had really good dark lower end and a very light upper top. And so I had the contrast, which is something that you need in, in, uh, in, uh, in composition, a very heavy contrast. So. Um, that was the essence of like, wow, maybe this could be a painting. So um, that's where I went with it. Bring a, I don't care, black and white. Uh, bring a, a picture from the LA Times. They, the photographers in there are awesome. They have some, they really take good pictures. A magazine, um, something the size of a postage stamp. It doesn't matter. And I'll help you understand how I would take it, break it into pieces, put thought into it and then put it onto a substrate of paper and, and, create, and create something from it that hopefully is me or would be you in this case. So if you wanna do that, and Saturday uh, we're gonna be uh, wherever the location is, I can't remember, but Bernard can help you out with that. And um, um, that's about kind of all I have to say at this point. If anybody has any questions, I would love to answer um, any any thoughts you might have or questions about the class that I'm thinking um, or questions about myself or or my other my experience. Uh, I have a question for you. Uh, yes. How how if you're seeing a scene, how carefully do you make the photograph? Do you zoom in? Do you compose? Uh, yeah. Do you think about it? Or do you just say, oh, that interesting. There's something there, click. Right. I mean, so I have a I have a few different cameras, uh, but um, mm -hmm. uh, one of them is um is a is a um, a very small camera, uh, and it's a it's a it's a nice really nice camera, but it, it doesn't take close up it doesn't take close up pictures. It's a um, it's one of these little cameras, uh, Fuji film, uh, but so I can take this I can take this and just. And when I'm in my car and I can just press a button and get a picture and I don't know what I'm getting, but it's a super high resolution and I can blow up a very small little pixel part of it. Yeah. yeah. This is that postage stamp uh, idea I was telling you. I can book, I can take a very small part of it, blow it up. And if I like it, then that's where I start. Uh, sometimes I even photograph um, out of focus, which photographers hate to hear. hear oh. that, but, <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I like to deal with simplicity. I like to try to be simple uh, to start with. 
Um, so anyway, hopefully that answers your question. Yeah. Ross, is anybody I, else thinking are something? You, uh, are you painting primarily in oil or what? Are, what is your preferred medium? What are you doing? Right, right. Uh, very good question. I, I love oil um, um, and, um, and maybe it's more suited for me to be a bigger a piece. Uh, I'll paint in uh, uh, th 24 by 30. I'm looking at a painting on my wall here that's um, 48 by 36. So that's pretty good size for me. That's oil. But um, um, I, I can go right from there to uh, painting watercolor on Arche uh, French paper uh, in, the, in a smaller version, but you know, 22 by 30. And I, and I love um, the drying capabilities of um, acrylics and gouache. So um, I cover a lot of different mediums. Right. Yeah. Cool. Right. Awesome. Yeah. So when you talk about, I mean, if you were, if you were seeing um, a beautiful uh, sky with rain about to come in and it might look stormy, I mean, we've all seen plenty of this and there's going to be more tomorrow to be very current. <laughs> And you say, oh, my God, that's a fabulous. And we're on the Esplanade in Redondo Beach. And, um, you know, it, we're all moved probably by storms and skies. But how would you say that would relate to you and your childhood? Is it because you were frightened by thunder? <laughs> or is it because you would look for episodes of fear? because the water level was too high in the gutters or hmm. you know, yeah interesting would you, would you be looking for an incident i mean i can remember losing a shoe in you know, yeah <laughs> you know it's funny it's funny that you you would bring it up like that well i don't think you know me that well when i was a child but you could yeah. guess like what 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 would drive that but but honestly um as you say that uh, one of my favorite things to paint themes to paint is um, um, uh, windows uh, like uh, on that 101 show? I had a yes. number of uh, windows, mm -hmm. um, just like like curtains coming down or like architectural lines coming down, and then uh, a sill, and then of a horizon, and so then I could move colors around inside there and and change. Um, change what it was but it was a window so I did a little research on windows and I uh, my sister is a um, um, what do you call it a portrait painter and so super accurate you know everything's totally detailed and perfect and she said it's interesting that you choose these windows um, uh, that, that, that you're inside of a dark interior and the light is coming from the window uh, and she said that that is a human a, uh, a condition that when you're looking out of a window, that it's um, you're safe and secure, uh, and the world is outside, and you're safe mm -hmm. and secure inside of your room or whatever. So um, I started thinking about that, and it was like, right, yeah, it's kind of um, it's kind of a calming, safe place. She also went on; she's really a smart person, and she's a well-read. She also went on to say that like cats like to be underneath a couch looking out. It's the same thing. Uh, <laughs> animals like to look out, you know, be hidden and look out because that's where they're safe. They know that their back is covered. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. So if you want to, if, if I could relate it, what you said, that's maybe kind of close. And so, but it's, in other words, you've probably seen stormy skies and rain and thunder. And of course, if it's lightning, you're probably inside looking out of the window i'm sure we can all relate to the to the yeah. anticipation of the thunder clap you know uh, how close was the thunder to the lightning if it's very close it means oh it's overhead it's overhead yeah. don't go outside um so you know maybe there's great psychological reasons why spirited skies stir us and i certainly get very excited by uh, weather conditions that are, you know, changing light and all that sort of stuff. Um, but, you know, if you're if you're looking at something like um, that that eating scene, cafeteria, what did you register some emotion when you took the picture? 
Yeah, I I did. The picture shows. Uh, yeah, it was the dark foreground and the window, right? And the window in the back that caused me to say, uh, I'm coming from a quiet, dark place, and I'm observing. I'm a voyeur observing people. And I'm safe where I am, and I can see. I can make it whatever I want. The yeah. two people, the two people that are on the horizon, are both facing the same direction. Yes, that's not a, that's not a good compositional setup for me. So in my in my sketchbook, I turned them opposite each other. You see, all right, kind of wacky, but if you can see that, yeah, yeah, <laughs> they they're turned towards each other. Well, that was a smart move. Yes. And so, so, how, so how do you feel about playing God? Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> it's magnificent. <laughs> you can make everyone's it, wish come true. <laughs> it, it is sort of like that, actually, because you're, um, you, as, when, as soon as you get the control of your medium or, you know, uh, your, your, um, your ability to mix color and what have you, you really are. You really are creating something that no one else has seen before, and it's and it's really coming from you. Yeah, and, and that and that is that really is fantastic. And I mean, sometimes I'm lucky enough to lean back after painting for six or eight hours, and I look at something big painting on the wall or whatever, and I go and I think to myself, how the how the heck did I do that? And not to pat myself on the back, but it it is it is kind of mysterious, really. I hope everybody has that feeling, really, that, it, you know, it's it's so beautiful what you do. Um, and and it's it's not a copy of someone else. It's really you. And, and it's and it's really beautiful. And it's something that you should look at and just it should fill your heart up, you know. And, and I think isn't that a good goal to have, really? To be yeah, a painter? Now, uh, Ross, could, could you yeah, talk a little somebody bit else about can ask your, a question? Could you talk a little bit about your process? It looks like maybe not always, but it looks like you might start with a photograph and then go to a sketch and, and yeah. then color sketch and then you're finished. How do you talk about that a little bit? Right. Yeah. So I really do go, I really do come from a photograph. Um, and, um, and, and, and that's a big part of it. So uh, I can take a photograph, like I said, from anywhere. And then I will uh, uh, take a picture of it with my cell phone, or I will scan it on my little scanner, and then it'll go into my computer, and I'll turn, I'll change colors on it, cool them down or warm them up or whatever, and then I'll I'll frame it out. I'll come in with some sort of finished looking thing that is where I think I can start. That goes into um, another process where I do a study. Um, and um, that's kind of why I have my open uh, studio because uh, a lot of times I sell I sell my studies <laughs> because they're just they're small like this like this um, what do you call it sketchbook here and so um, people can pick up a nice little piece of original art but then that's the second phase and if it works at that point then I know that I think I have something at that at that point. And then I will take it and I will either make it larger or put it onto a larger piece of paper or put it onto canvas or, or whatever. So it is definitely a process. As a matter of fact, I have a, a sign on my wall right in front of my main um, large desk where I do a lot of work. I usually stand here instead of sitting as I am. But uh, it has four words on it with arrows between them. Photo, arrow to gouache, arrow to study, arrow to scale to, oh. you know. and so yeah i have a definite process um you know i could i can also tell you that um i'm not a i'm not a big fan of being in love with the process <laughs> because uh you can lose yourself in a wonderful way where you don't even think about anything and maybe that's what that's maybe what some people do you know practice the uh, uh their artistic um uh, abilities with is just to zone out uh, uh, far better than than watching TV or watching TikTok or something it is to paint art is to do art. But um, I try not to fall in love with it to that point. And that's why, as Bernard was saying, I, I know exactly how long it takes me to paint a painting, paint a picture, draw a picture, 
do whatever because I, I want to make sure that I'm not spending too much time on it. I'm not zoning out and, and waking up literally, so to speak, like three hours later, like, what 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 was I doing? I, I don't, I you know, it's noon or whatever. Or my wife's calling me for dinner. Like, where are you? <laughs> and that does happen. But, and it's a wonderful thing to feel. But at the same time, I want to, I want to know where I am all the time. I want to be in the moment. So I, I, I measure those things. Um, anyway, my, you my own. Save something for the finished piece there, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. Because uh, and and that's another thing I do. I know this sounds really, probably sounds really um, too detailed, but um, I have notebooks that I each piece goes into a notebook, and I and it's the evolution of that piece. And I will say I painted from uh, from uh, two o'clock in the in the afternoon till till four thirty, uh, and then I got done, and I did I blocked in, or I did this, I did whatever, and then I put on I put underneath there the percentage of the painting that is done. Is that oh range or what like, <laughs> yeah. I'm, in 50%, from, I'm, I'm in 75 percent and so when i get to and you were saying finish the paint you'll save some for the finishing the painting yeah. off, I, I totally agree so when i get to about 95 plus i stop i put the painting away against the wall i don't look at it for like a week i come back it's all it's all like new to me and then i that's when i do that five percent awesome yeah. yes so it, it, it might sound as if you're micro micromanaging <laughs> myself, <Yourself>. micromanaging myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe, uh, yeah, maybe. Um, but um, yeah, that's just me. That's just me. Um, it's okay. I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, uh, it's not something I want to talk about when I when I when I have when I talk on Saturday. Um, sure. it, it's just it's it's a quirky thing that I do. That's all. It's. Uh, that's what it is. You don't okay. you don't have to do that. And I think free flowing yourself and 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 understand you know whatever you understand. That's a beautiful thing. Whatever you do and and uh, me, I'm sort of um, I quantify things a little bit too much. But yeah, yeah but, that's but you know, there's a difference if you're outside doing something, and if you and if you've been outside and now you've got the photograph. Oh my gosh, what am I going to do with this? It's two yeah. different activities, isn't it? You mean having a photograph or painting? Well, painting. if you're painting outside is one thing, but yeah. coming back in, having taken a photograph of something, and it could be yeah. just a street scene or a gas station, yeah. uh, but there's something in it that tickles you. Uh, there's, there's a different kind of analysis going on. Right. I think there is because um, you, that's why the photograph itself, uh, the detail in the photograph is not that important. Uh, to me, yeah. um, uh, but it has to be something that is, it has to be something that really, really grabs you for a reason you don't know is, if it's a reason that you don't know, it's probably better, because then it's coming from, you know, deep in, in, in your soul somewhere, wherever that is. I, I did this painting. Uh, I've done this painting a couple of times. This is a walk street, uh, looking down an alley. In, I Manhattan Beach. And I, what I liked was this little square right here of sand that it, I cut the painting, I cut the picture up into pieces and I made a collage out of it. And I made that little square completely square. So uh, that's what grabbed me the first time. And, and, I, and that's, that's where I went. I painted this painting probably four or five times. Uh, and that square keeps getting defined each time. So yes, it's not so much, it's not so much the photograph itself. It's the thought that you put into that, that uh, painting or drawing that, and you using that photograph is what I'm, what is what I'm looking for. Um, and, and how you see yourself in those, uh, in that created uh, theme or, or painting that you've made uh, from that photograph. Um, you're not painting a photograph for reasons of reproduction, reproducing a photograph. You're not rendering a photograph. Mm -hmm. um, you're grabbing the essence of what it is that your mind connected with in that image. Me, it was a little square of sand to, that was the beach. I know, 
it sounds crazy, but Saturday I can explain a lot more. <laughs> Are you ever trying to finish a piece plain air? Do you ever go do that? Uh, well, I have this, I have the boats, Bernard, that we were doing the last time we got together. Yeah, and, at, at Moonstone Park. Yeah, let me grab it. Let me grab it. Oh, okay. And, and I pretty much, I think I pretty much finished this right on the spot. Um, so oh, wow. these were, um, what do you call those boats? Um, paddle, paddle boats, right? Where you stand on them and you- Paddle you boating, paddle. yep. Yeah, and all I liked was all the color that was there. So yes. I just grabbed it all. And I and the background became kind of not that important. Um, and I and I came to the studio for it and I put that little piece of yellow on there. That's all I did. And that was it. I said, don't touch it. It's perfect. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I think to answer your question, some, but, you know, but, some, but you see, sometimes they come out really, they cut, they end perfectly. Sometimes they don't. So it's yeah. Okay. And in the case of where you've got masts of the yachts, the masts yeah. then create a grid system, and you fall in, you fall into the grid system, where you're. It's like painted by numbers. You suddenly yeah. fill in between the lines, so you uh, yeah. dif different violets and blues between the masts because you didn't see them at first, but right. it becomes part of the composition. I think I know. I think that um, I paint, I don't paint intellectually. I don't create intellectually. It's more, um, um, it's more loose and, and um, whatever kind of happens. And there, a lot of people, you know, um, as, as, as opposed to, oh, I need to put a lighter color next to this darker color, or I need to like make that sky blue and then the, in the ocean, a different color blue. I just um, intuitively move through the, the process. Maybe the biggest thing that I look at is uh, distance and, and foreground and middle ground uh, and, and then color of some kind um, or the explosion of color uh, in mm -hmm. this case. Uh, it yeah. was quite a, quite a lot of nice color. Uh, so I, I painted that um, right on the ground uh, yeah. with my acrylics. Um, and um, in about, like you said, 31 minutes. Uh, and, uh, and what oh, I do oh, is oh, I, write the, I write down on the painting at the bottom. When I started, I started at 10, 10, 10. And I ended at, 10, at, at basically, you know, 10, 10. Uh, 40, uh, 10, 10, 10, 40, it says it's cut off now, but 10, 40. So um, uh, it, I know how long it took me to do it. I know the date that I did it. And um, uh, yeah, that's. So, yeah. So, but uh, just tell us more about why you're putting the timer on. Is it, oh, I need to calculate the worth or is it your, something yeah. for yourself or what? Yeah. Well, okay. So it's my own neurosis. Uh, it, <laughs> I, I, it is really. I only have so much time. We all we all only have so much time, and well, I want to well, make some. I want to make something. I want to make something that I can that I can be really. I can fall in love with, and I I don't even want to sell it. I people walk in and they want to buy it, or or I I keep it. Sometimes I keep them. I don't even want to. I don't even want to let them go. I want to make something like that. Um, and so. Um, if I'm into a painting um, and I and I've spent two and a half hours on it and it's just terrible, I don't want to keep going. I want to stop. Um, and so I don't know. It's an inverted thing. So if I know that I'm on, under the gun to complete something in a reasonable amount of time, because I only have 12 hours a day, let's say, to paint, then um, I better watch my time. And as I watch it, I do it faster. I'm a pretty fast painter. I do it faster and I do it more like I really like it. So it, it actually is not neurotic. It actually works pretty well, but it seems like it's a neurosis. You know, it seems like I'm crazy about something. Um, yeah. So I don't know if that answers the question, you know, why? why well, would I... uh, well, the reason I mentioned it is that I just went to see a lawyer uh, <laughs> the other day and, okay. uh, and I talked about <laughs> Sorry, I'm not suing anybody, <laughs> but I said, I want to talk about what happens when I die and who gets what. Right. And the reply originally was, well, 
um, I'm so and so, and I charge six hundred and eighty dollars an hour <laughs> in ten minute increments. And then if you're dealing with our assistant uh, legal, what's it? She's three hundred and eighty dollars an hour wow. and bills her in five minute increments. And suddenly they said it right there. Don't waste our time. Don't waste your own time. Right. Don't 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 try and tell stories. You're yeah. in a lawyer's office. And if you if you wander off and start whinging about your brother or your sister, you'll pay for it. Right. It is how I read it. Yes. Well, I think it, when it, 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 to, it was it was chastening. Yeah, I think when it comes to your your, you know, I I think I'm I'm right or I, I feel like that's why I, I measure it is because I only have so much time. And um, as you may all well know, hopefully, or, or maybe this is uh, just certain people do it, but I spend almost as much time looking at something as I do um, painting it or creating it. Yeah. Because I get, you know, you get to a phase where you block it in and then you look at it and go, oh, I don't even like that side. But wait, I don't want to mess it up. And then, you know, an hour later, you go, OK, I'm going to come back in. I'm going to do this. And so and so, uh, you know, and then I don't add all that time up, but um, I, I, I can't I can't like spend a whole bunch of time and then have have no result. I don't want I want to have a result. And so I'll stop myself um, quickly if it's not working very well. Uh, and if it's working well, then I go through the phases. And there might be three or four phases before it gets to the point where it's very rock hard and it's got its own life and it's it's speaking its own, it's saying what it wants to say to someone else. The observer who looks at these paintings, not my paintings, but anyone's paintings, where they put themselves into it, um, they um, are getting... Uh, they are getting a true response from the observer. They, people like it because they see something and you know, you don't have to paint, you don't have to draw, you don't have to be an artist. And, and you, can, you can wander into a gallery and, and you, you like art or you, 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 want, you want to know more about it, but something will grab you and it will like say that's, you know, it'll speak to you across the room, come, come to me come here, I want to talk to you. And you'll go over to it and you just love it. Or, or the observer will love it. And so I think when that happens, you're actually communicating with, you're actually communicating in a certain way with the artist because the artist put down what he or she really meant and felt. So that's where I would encourage everyone to kind of to try to go to. Can I ask a question not about time, but about the actual process of your art? Um, yeah. You mentioned foreground, middle ground, background, but it appears in the samples you've shown us so far, you're actually compressing the space and kind of expunging the atmospheric perspective. Can you speak to that for a moment? Yeah, well, you're right. Um, and what I, I, I honestly, I honestly fall into the trap of the photographic trap, which is it's a one, it's really just a flat surface. So um, I, my, my kind of thought is I have to expand it, but it doesn't always get pushed out. Um, I, I, I am less concerned with um, particulate in the air that indicates uh, distance, uh, mountains in the back and, and that kind of thing. Um, uh, because I, 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 focused on, I focus on what's in closer to me. So, uh, I think you're right. I, I, I don't um, I don't really emphasize the the background, the middle ground, and the foreground. Although they are there, they really are. They are quite compressed. You're right. Yeah. So is that like patterns and deepen cormish kind of? I'm not saying you're copying Richard Deepen I'm not. Yeah. But is yeah. that kind of the the thought process? I'm going to almost become topographical um, and and separate space in a compressed sense. Yeah, exactly. Uh, David Korn, and, and, uh, and thank you, we're not copying, I'm not copying him, but um, I can mimic his thought, which is, you know, if, is, which is my definition of art, is the definition I've taken for art, is when you put your thought into material and put that material onto a board, a paper, a, a toned paper, whatever. 
uh, but it's your thought that's doing that. Um, Stephen Korn did it, and he would raise up. He would raise up elevation. He would change the um, the perspective to suit his needs. So he would at, that would be an abstraction of what the reality was. So um, I don't feel my uh, my foreground and and middle and background is an abstraction when it's compressed. It's just kind of natural for me to do that. But I do have very abstracted brush strokes and and foregrounds that get out of focus and backgrounds that become very light and just deft touch. And I, I find that interesting. Well, the one behind your head that we can see as you turn your head about. Oh yeah. That's right behind. So it's yeah. very, I mean, the, the plate has been very much tipped open, right? Because it would be more ellipsis. It would be more of an ellipse if we, we actually saw from that, that well, that's, Change that's, uh, correct? yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. um, that's, a. Uh, can you see it that well? Yeah. It's actually uh -huh. a queen's necklace. Yeah, I know exactly okay, where good. it is. It's like from Leventa, Thank you. I think. <laughs> Leventa Inn, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Oh, it's so off. I took the gouache, I took the gouache um, to go through the process again. And you can do this with any kind, any art you want. Uh, but my, my, my thought was uh, I wanted to paint. I wanted to paint a, la a landscape, okay. Uh, uh, and so here's the gouache of that painting. Mm. Nice. Wow, that That's is beautiful. Cool. That's really lovely. Even and though it's abstracted, it's still yes, and it's a beautiful little painting. And then it changed. That is also 24 by 24 inches. So it got a little tighter, but it still stayed abstracted. But from a distance, you can see, she says, yeah, it's, I see it's Queen's necklace. So I, I accomplished what I wanted to. It's um, not a pure abstract, uh, but it is abstracted. And um, it comes from my heart which it actually started with that right there. And, and, uh, and it all comes together and it all works out pretty cool. It's lovely. Thank you very much. Thank and you. of course it's, um, it vibrates because you've got different uh, techniques there. You've got a very thin technique. You've got a very thick brush technique, brutal in terms of the foam and things. And then you've got the back of the brush you're scratching lines that's right that's right there's everything in there and uh, <laughs> yeah it's all in there and you're right it's scratched off and it's painted over and it's it's rubbed and it's burnished and uh, um and this little painting here this is my gouache so this little painting only took me these paintings take me about 40 minutes to paint these 35 to 40 minutes well, so it's a state of mind yeah. It's all yeah. about the state of mind because it's not about copying the photograph. What you've done is right. you said, I like certain values to be close together. I like contrasts in, in various areas. And, and this stuff has been loaded into your brain. And so when you set about and you're working with gouache, which means it's watercolor, but you, you thicken it with, um, with uh, we used to call it Chinese white. Yeah, <laughs> if yeah. you remember, right. uh, it, it's basically thick white paint. Yeah, and the result is is that you're that you're you're approaching it with an attitude. Right. Well, you are, and and um, also with um, you're you're uh, also letting go of your attitude. <laughs> so um, for 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 uh, for means of explaining, um, you're not. The, the photograph becomes less and less important. And uh -huh. I'll, talk, I'll talk to that on Saturday, but um, there's a way to look at things and not to look at things. And there's a way to reason with uh, what you're seeing, dark and light. And like a notan that has, is just uh, grays, grayscale. Right. Um, you know, you can, you can put things together, it's, it's a piece of cardboard, but I'll do these occasionally. Oh, yeah. I'm just trying to get some idea what, um, some shapes might look like if I put them into something like this. There's nothing here, 
but um, there's a, a nice white uh, rectangular movement going on. There's a lot of foreground. So um, that that's that's something that ignores um, the photographic uh, thing that it could be or color or anything. Yeah. Uh, but then you can take it with that photograph. It's just part of the whole thing. The, yeah, it's I'm not the grayscale. It's not the it's not the telephone wires and the birds flying. It's a, it's bigger things than that. But it has to emanate from you. So um, don't don't think you're gonna don't copy what you're looking at. Feel no, and, it. And, and I can see how this would translate very very easily to someone using pastels, because oh, yeah. uh, you know years and years ago there were thin square uh, little pastels which were very good for. Uh, cracking and then you know uh, rubbing in at, at different angles but they're very flat and then there's also roundy pastels that were getting s softer and butterier and then you've got a new breed of pastels that are the much the much bigger blocks they're like mm. almost like erasers that they're big mm. and blocky and the certain artists who, who who have really fallen in love with this technique and then there's these mega pastels that are as big as fruits, <laughs> and yeah. um, you you can actually plaster. Is it something like that? Yes. <laughs> are those oil based? These are these are these are oil sticks. Oil bars, yeah, yeah, yeah. But but the but the concept is interestingly uh, parallels it because it's in your hand. Yeah, and you've you've got it's to a grab weapon. onto it. Yeah. It's a weaponizing pastel. Oh my gosh, you can really go to town with these things and just. Have a really good time. Um, right. Does it do, is it does it apply to to pastel? When I'm talking of applied to pastels, absolutely. Yeah. The time at which you put the pigment onto the the surface and put your thought into it, that's up to you. But uh, and and that that and, and 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 that's what makes it work. Um, and I and I'm not a pastel painter. I'm um, uh, I'm what I said I was, you know, acrylic and gouache and oil, but it doesn't, it's not really that much of a difference. The the it's ultimate it's thought still of it is the same. Yeah. It's pigment and how do you get it on to the space in front of you? Right. Right. Yeah. Okay, again, circling back to your actual work, it looks like your gouaches are more intense and saturated in color, and then your actual paintings end up much more tonal in color. Is that by intent or just it happens when you switch mediums? Well, yeah, because gouache, um, it's a good, it's good observation because uh, gouache, um, it, um, it, it uh, dries really fast. So if, if you want to, it, it will dry, it will, the whole painting dries right away. And um, if it doesn't, I have a, I have a blow dryer <laughs> hanging off of my, hanging off of my, um, my bench here and I and I go ahead and I go ahead and dry it myself but um, these things they dry really fast so you literally have to really paint fast but what it does is it gives you a really good edge sharp a sharp edge and it gives you um, good uh, contrast between light and dark if you if you want to really get something cut in there it's it's quite nice. Um, does that happen in pastel? That's up to you. Sure, it does. It does. I mean, some of the pastels I've seen from the from the uh, the originators back in uh, back in the you know the Renaissance were they were they look like oil paintings. They look like beautiful. Yes, they're all beautiful. Insane. Just how, how did you how did they even do that? So it's you can manipulate it. <clears throat> um, this is a this is gouache here, but it's got a lot more water in it. Palos Verdes Peninsula, as you know, Palos Verdes. Mm -hmm. I'm doing a, I'm doing a painting. I'm going to try to do a big painting of, of an aerial view, Diebenkorn style, so that uh, you're looking down on the peninsula, on the peninsulas, on, in a place where you'd never be unless you were flying an aircraft, you know. So, and I, I just kept going through these. And I, I keep modulating color and everything else. And I will come up with something. Uh, this doesn't have a photographic base to it because there is no photograph that I 
I can't find a photograph like this. Um, no. So anyway, yeah. Very interesting. Ross, did you, um, you talked a little earlier about how fast, well, I, I don't like the word fast, but how you complete a painting and you're confident you know what you're doing and you get it done, right? Yes. Earlier um, in your career, were you like hunting and pecking and trying to figure it out? And, I ha yeah, and at some point, did you come to feel yourself come together? I mean, talk about your evolution a little bit. Yeah, right. So no, yeah, you're right. I, I would uh, paint uh, watercolors um, detailed of, um, uh, uh, you know, Playa Concha and, and the beach city, the beach cities, and I had to be so precise about everything, that literally, I felt like I was, I was stressing, I was stressing out when I painted, I was like, trying to catch my breath. <laughs> like, oh my god, I, well, in watercolors, you can't really make a mistake. You better not, because uh, you can't erase it unless you know how to do it really quick. But you, it's tough. Um, so yeah, I would, I would, um, I would, I would go faster and faster um, because I didn't want to have to deal with it. And then changing to different mediums. Um, I think your question was somewhere in there, but um, uh, I, I try to to get it done in a in a in a fast motion. I I. I because it's it's all the time that I need to do it. It's just a, my personal a thing. If it if it takes someone, you know, if it takes me thirty minutes and takes someone else an hour, that's fine. It's it doesn't mean anything. Uh, but I think it's good to understand how long it should it does take you, uh, or how long um, uh, how much time you need to do what you you want to achieve. And I think I've come to see that over the years that it, um, uh, I, I, I don't, I paint pretty quick. And, um, uh, and, I, and I, when I slow down, it doesn't get any better. It, it sometimes gets messed up because I overwork it. You know, we all know we can overwork. It's so easy to uh, just keep working it and keep working it and keep working it and going, oh no, I just put too much pigment on there or, or that's, that's, I gotta start over. So uh, uh, yeah, I've I've gone through that whole process and um, kind of I I heard somebody say kind of in a kind of in a corny way, you know. A lot of people ask me when I have shows they sometimes not a lot of people they go how how long did it take you to paint this? And um, I kind of lie to them because nobody really knows you know how long <laughs> it takes. So sure. I go I don't know three or four hours I guess. But well, you really. Know I was, 90, I was 90 percent done in one hour but yeah okay I, I i'll say that but i've also heard people say really corny right maybe bernard you might have heard this how long did it take you to paint that and then you'd say let's see about, about 30 years in one hour <laughs> because <laughs> well <laughs> it, it took me 30 years to figure out to answer your question sir uh, you know what's your background it took me a long time to figure out um to get free to the point to where um, I could not be cocky, but I could literally just pick up like two colors and create a work that I thought was pretty decent in a very short amount of time or yeah. a limited palette, you know, red and yellow and blue and black and white and a real limited palette and just, and just make something that, uh, wow, I thought that was pretty cool. I've done paintings before that were, that were honestly, they were they were pretty darn good in about twenty minutes or so. I think I told Bernard this story. I was in the garage when we used to live in Torrance, and uh, I was in the garage painting, and the bicycles were there, and the moving boxes, and I had my little niche, and I I was painting, I was painting, and my wife says, uh, "We're going to my brother's house for dinner. It's Sunday, you know." So and I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, she called out again. She goes, we got to go. We got to go. And I go, I'm right in the middle of something. Well, I had only been painting it for 20 minutes. And I, it's one of my favorite paintings. <laughs> it's, 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 I didn't even touch it after that. The skin tone on the figures was not, it was kind of cold looking. I, I don't even want to touch it. It's, it's perfect. But does that happen all the time? Heck no. Heck no. Oh, no. It, there was a famous court case about, uh, with a well-known uh, American painter who lived in uh, London, and he was uh, he he painted portraits, and they were full-length portraits and all that. 
and he was commissioned to paint uh, you know, the Duke of So and So's wife, and the Duke uh, and the and the and the and the cost of the of the painting was going to be ten thousand pounds in 1905 or something. And when the Duke was presented with the bill, he said, "But my wife says she only sat for you five times, and." Um, and I know that there was another model who stood in to, to model the dress and, uh, and all that, but it seems ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, it looks like you only spent 20 hours in yeah. my humble estimation. And this was in court. And wow. the judge said, is that, is, is that accurate? And the painter said, yeah. But, um, and then the judge said, well, how long did it take you to paint? He said, all my life. Yeah, right. That's how long it took me. It kind of does. It kind of does, because you can remember. I, I believe he won the case. The yeah. painter won. Sounds, John Singer Sargent, right? It's one of those things where I can remember sometimes when I'm really thinking about it that um, uh, I painted like this when I was 15, you know, what, what one little stroke like, oh, God, yeah, I remember I used to paint just like this. Uh, so um, it is a culmination of everything that you've ever done. And yeah. to answer your question, um, you know, uh, it, does, it takes a, it takes a lot of time. And that's yeah. why I don't I try not to get enamored with the process because um, make it uh, it, it's important and teachers are important, but. But it's more important that you do your do what it is what you feel you want to do in art. Get a little bit of process, like a year or two of it, you know, and get your get going. Process meaning uh, mixing and, and a little bit of composition and a little bit of um, uh, um, you know uh, different uh, movements back and forth, uh, line and, uh, and and those kind of things. And then and then go get a theme that you that turns you on that you just try to knock it out and do it and and let it go and 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 then i don't care if it takes 20 minutes or 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 two hours when you're done with it you look at it and go damn it's just so beautiful i you know that's what that's what you want um and everybody else can be damned you know it's like it's it's about you and your painting and and trust me if you feel that way about what you make others will look at it and say wow that's really good, you know? <laughs> it's not just a painting of a house or a car parked in a driveway or a boat sitting on a lake or whatever. It's like, what is it about that? I have some paintings of, of Palos Verdes, the peninsula where uh, uh, Bernard, the, the, the clouds, uh, I can probably show you these too. The clouds I put in there were like crazy. Uh, like I put like red, uh, uh, stripes in these clouds and and it's not it's not electricity and the clouds were just vibrating back and forth and the and the and the peninsula went out it was very sharp edges on the peninsula and the water looked really eerie and uh, i've had these galleries you know dion took a look at it and he goes i can't sell this it's it's it, it's too weird ross it's like too he calls it sophisticated and i said just let it go just give it put it on there put it on the wall and just let it go and somebody came in they just went wow what is what is this what is going on with this who is who did who did this and i forgot to sign it and and uh and uh, and they, they said oh it's this guy you know it's ross ross moore he's an artist and uh they go where's his signature and it's like oh he didn't, he didn't sign it so they came up they he brought it over to the studio. They came into my studio and they 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 were drilling me for like an hour. Like, how does all this work? And so uh, it's not, a, a, and it's amazing, but it's not, a, it's not me. It's just the way that it should be. You know, it's the way it should be. Um, when you put yourself into that painting, it's going to reverberate back to the viewer, not to every viewer, but to the ones that get it. They may be like you. They're going to communicate with you through that weird space. Um, and that's why I think, you know, I think contemporary art, everything's contemporary art. Because when you look at a, a you know, a, a Caravaggio, you know, and you look at that and go, my God, I feel that, you know, I feel that knife or that mm -hmm. the body blow of that person or whatever. You're communicating with that artist. 
yeah. 400, 400 years ago, 500 years ago. So, yeah, you know, I mean, it's these things sound strange, but um, why not believe them? You know, all, all it's going to do is make your art better. I can almost promise you. Because we so I got a couple of questions from the chat, if I can read them to you. One of them is, are you a fan of Edward Hopper? And the other one is, what are your favorite oil brushes, size, shape? How many different ones do you use in a painting? And then, <laughs> Two different uh, subjects. Uh, Margie, you had your hand up. Well, yes, I asked about the Edward Hopper. Oh, okay. Oh, Edward Hopper. Uh, well, yeah. well, I was going to tell you, I was very influenced by Hopper and also the Jimmy Stewart movies because I had that feeling looking out through a window that I would face, but that got really turned around. <laughs> when you think about It's a Wonderful Life and- oh. Are you talking about Jimmy Stewart and the Alfred Hitchcock movie in San Francisco? Yes. Oh, okay. I didn't hear you say, it was Psycho, right? No, what was it? No, uh, Vertigo. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, we're yeah. That is a that whole movie is a black and white um, uh, um, hopper, isn't it? <laughs> you hit that right on the head. That's pretty cool. Uh, uh, you know, yeah, I love Hopper. I mean, I love his. Uh, you know, you can paint. That's a very good example of something I'm talking about. You can anybody can paint like Hopper. Anybody can paint like that. Do it. Do it yourself. Take that yellow uh, fascia uh, of that porch and then put the red roof on and then the blue windows, whatever, you know, and then have a nice blue sky and green, green, green grass. You can do it. You can do it. But guess what? Doesn't look like a hopper. Does looks right. nothing like a hopper. <laughs> it looks nothing like a hopper because he's the one who put the energy into it. He and, and that's what makes his simple paintings. Uh, they're kind of creepy, like dark, kind of like moody looking things. You can't do that by saying, I want to make a moody um, uh, uh, a theater. Uh, you remember that one in the theater with the, with the sconce lights and, and the red uh, velvet uh, and, and the lights are glowing into the seats and everything. You can't do, you can't do that. You're not, but Hopper could do it because he put his thought into that, into that medium. I, um, I copied a deep and corn I copied a deep and corn painting. It's around here somewhere. Um, and it's a it's a seawall, if anybody knows it. Um, and um, I, I I did a complete replica of that painting. It's a perfect replica of that painting. Can you bring it on and Saturday? It's I'll bring it, but you know what? You it doesn't it. have any energy at all. It is a piece of dead wood. It's amazing. <laughs> I'll bring it. I'll bring it. It's amazing. Sure. I don't know how many people know about deep and corn. Uh, oh, but um, but I the, thought everybody did. Everybody does. <laughs> no, well, he's, would like he's pretty know. popular. He's pretty popular, and uh, um, his life was very um, um, interesting. And uh, uh, but he went through different phases, and uh, he ended up. Uh, you know, the whole world was against him because he went figurative in a, in a, in, a, in a time when everyone was going. Um, what do you call it? Uh, abstract, you know. Um, yes. So, the Kooning, for example. But but and he went in and and he said uh, this abstraction doesn't work for me, and I'm going to go back to figurative. And then he went from figurative to abstraction, which was the uh, which was the uh, the uh, the uh, Ocean Park series, yes. which you know these beautiful turquoise green curved to things and oh, uh, this, angular this, lines. There's so much education in a deep yeah. form. Uh, absolutely absolutely you, you, you look at i have a list of i have a list of his things i keep it in front of me all the time huh? and uh oh here it is right here mistakes you can't mistakes can't be erased but they move you from your present position oh gosh i haven't seen this in a long time um attempt what is not certain certainty may or may not come later it may then be a valuable delusion. Oh my God. Okay. It's the temple of Devoncorn. That <laughs> I worship that guy because you read that stuff and then you meditate on it. And then well, you bring obviously, it from... obviously Devoncorn was a student of Bob Ross. <laughs> <laughs> Bernard. Uh, sorry. 
Cutting the middle. No, not really. Today, you said Terry. <laughs> there are no mistakes. There's only happy little accidents. Bob yes. Ross. Right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. That's that was funny. Yeah. So but, um, anyway, so <laughs> there right. was a question about oil painting brushes from someone. Oh yeah. What, what oh, okay. I mean, what brushes I use and all that stuff. Yeah. And what are uh, your favorite brushes, size, shape. Yeah. yeah. How yeah. many different ones do you use? Yeah. Let's see. I got a couple here. So I, I when I paint big, I use big brushes. When I paint small, I use small brushes. So I have all of these, and but I really like, I really like these. These are like super fun brushes. Yeah. Uh, they are. I think there are 16s. Mm -hmm. All of these are 16s. And uh, I have a whole process to keep them clean. But um, I have about 400 brushes. So, um, and, you know, I don't really need 400 brushes because I only, I only, I only use uh, five at a time. I only use five at a time. So, yeah. but I also use uh, cotton rags to uh, put uh, material on. I use, um, Stuff I got in a hardware store, which is amazing. Um, we're not we're not talking about oil painting, but I just in this one instance, they have these little furry pads that you can put uh, paint on, and then you can you can make a really nice line, or you know you can go up against a uh, oh yeah door jam. They're like little hairy things, and they're like uh, wide as a they're about four inches wide, and about about five or six inches. I see one uh -huh. over there, but I'm not going to go get it. They're about this tall and they're made out of styrofoam and you dip them in the paint and you just draw this line against the, you know, against a corner or whatever, and it makes a perfect line. So I take those things, I cut them in pieces, like angular, like, like triangular shape. And I dip them and then I just, I, they're like scrub brushes. I just scrub the paint on and it does really cool stuff. So, mm. uh, I mean, here again, what we can talk about process and I'm, I'm not enamored by it and I'm not, um, attached to it, I can take it or leave it. As long as I get, as long as I get the painting I want, as long as I get the, that, that energy coming from me into that painting and back out, then I, I'm very happy and I'll, I'll paint with a stick, you know, or a toothbrush. It doesn't matter as long as I can get what I want. Yeah. <laughs> very good. Um, Marjorie, you got your hand up. Oh, I can put it down now. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> what a I have a question. Um, and you may have answered this because my power went off and it just went back. Um, <laughs> what is it about Deben corn that fascinates you? Well, um, I think he, yeah, that's a really good question. And no, I did not answer it. Um, you know, he, uh, he was a painter that didn't care what other people were driving at in popularity. He did his thing. He did what he wanted to do. Um, and he, he took, that's one part. And then the other part is he took what he saw, me, I look at photographs, he looked at, uh, you know, life, and then he changed it into something different which I thought was, I think is so great. Of course, everybody does that, right? I mean, um, Hopper's paintings, uh, they weren't that saturated color. They're probably really boring looking Victorian homes, you know, in, in Connecticut or wherever he was, but he juiced them all up. So everybody does it, but uh, Demon Corn just brings something true to me. And I, I don't know why, but, and I've read a lot about him and there's a lot that you can read about him. Uh, and uh, it just keeps ringing through that he was a person that was really into understanding his art, not, not, not mixing the colors, not, not quite frankly, what kind of materials to use or brushes or whatever, or you know what size or <clears throat> what scale or whatever, but really wanted to know what it was that he was doing and was intent on being his own person so you know i mean hopefully i can be that way and hopefully i'm getting there yeah. can you comment on your use of 
change in the horizon line in your paintings. I just looked you up your work and they're very interesting horizon lines you pick. Oh, thank you. Um, well, <clears throat> what are they? They're usually, well, they can be really high sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If I want to, if I want to look, I mean, tech, technically speaking, they can be really high if I want to look at the foreground or they can be um, uh, quite low if I'm looking at clouds or, or a lightning storm or, or looking at the abstraction of what clouds really are. Um, but um, most of the time, I think they're right in the middle or they're up and down, not so peaking the top, not all the way at the bottom, but somewhere uh, about 20% off of center, up or down. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I, I appreciate that question because um, uh, I, I would like to get away from, I would like to get away from uh, horizons, uh, but uh, because it frees you up from having to explain, uh, you don't have to, well, you don't have to explain where you are, you know, on the sphere, you know, you're, you can be anywhere, but as soon as you put a horizon in, you gotta, you have an up and a down and north and a south and a distance. All I have to do is put a line in. So I kind of don't like that, but if I can put a bunch of things on a horizon to cover it up, like that boat painting, I think that Bernard used um, in this uh, uh, in this meeting, uh, you'll see a bunch of, I'm looking at it right now as I stare off uh, the wall. There's a bunch of white boats with a dark, kind of a lighter, darker green ocean with a lighter greenish blue sky, almost the same uh, intensity. Uh, so there's a horizon there, but it's buried. It's it's buried with a. It's covered by a bunch of things. Uh, if, if you notice the horizons I do put in, sometimes they're really small. Are you seeing that in your what in my art? Yeah. Well, yes, but it almost seems the intent. This is what I'm trying to drive to: is the intent to have the falling off of the foreground feel, like in your street scenes, your walk up scenes, your foreground in the the um, the shot from the vent in. It's like the the foreground gets to fall off in space, and it's a it's a neat tension you've created. Oh, thank you. Well, I th you mean, but is it you think? Do you think it's created by the horizon, or yes. that's yeah being so yeah. high, and then the plate of the ocean being so open? I'm falling off, but it's not an uncomfortable feeling. It's a it's a tension, admittedly. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, if I have something, if I keep our, if I. The horizon creates, no matter what you think as an artist, there's a sort of a canon law that's involved that when you put a horizon and you've, you've already uh, dictated a lot of what your painting is. And so um, I, think I, try, I think I try to manipulate that. And sometimes I put in um, perspective that's, that denies the horizon. In other words, uh, yeah. It's 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 weird. It's like uh, that can't be the right horizon with that perspective. Thank you. That's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for explaining. Yeah. Good question. Looks like we're at the end of the uh, session. No, let's keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've had a great time. Thanks so much, and I appreciate the questions. And I I. Um, I hope uh, we can get a small, a nice group there on Saturday. Um, I'll bring a bunch of paintings with me and we can talk about um, taking photographs that I will be bringing some of my own photographs and I intend to uh, cut them up and collage them together and, and talk about them and draw on top of them with Sharpies and all kinds of other things. So the demonstration will be uh, kind of fun and uh, you're welcome to all come and bring uh, an image or two or or don't and bring an image or two and I can help you uh, understand what I think a little bit more and we'll, we'll have a good time. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Just as a reminder you. everybody, we're having our meeting, our members meeting Saturday at uh, you know 9.30 starting to socialize, meeting starts at 10. So we'll see you there. Good, Great. okay. I'll see you all there. Thank, thank you, thank you once again. Thanks everybody for chiming in and and uh, and uh, listening to the to the talk. It was enjoyable. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Much appreciated.